how do you think these public-private partnerships actually help um, food security around the world? What role do you think they have in, say, some of the uh, the lower-income countries that we know really are struggling with food security? Yeah, that, that's something that I think a lot of times in Canada we we just really fail to to grasp and, and appreciate what's going on in these other countries. And and one of the things from our research is we found there's some really excellent examples around the world where you know, private sector or philanthropic organizations are, are working with public sector research labs to, to try and get better varieties out. A, a really good example is the collaboration between the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and, and research in East Central and, and Southern Africa around trying to develop more water efficient corn. And, and the result of that 10 year collaboration was that they improved the water efficiency of, of corn or, or maize in, in Africa by some, you know, estimates are sort of 25 to 35%. So, you know, that's a tremendous advantage that, that local small scale farmers are able to, to know that their corn yields are, are going to be as, as high as they possibly can be. I think another area where a, a, a lot of people, um, may not recognize the, the contributions between public-private partnerships is in the, the sequencing of, of various plant genomes in the past decade. We, you know, Saskatchewan here, our university had a, had a strong role to play in the sequencing of the wheat genome just, just recently, but, but also the rice genome and, and lentil genomes have opened up tremendous opportunities to increase food security all around the world, you know, in, in parts of Asia and Africa, um, Latin Latin America, that where where food insecurity is a problem, the the sequencing of of these very um, various plant genomes are going to make a significant contribution to the ability of of local ag research centers to to take what um, information comes from the those various plant genomes and then apply them to apply that knowledge to developing better varieties that that they've been producing for decades. So I. I think it, it's it's um, food security is is going to be one of the the most substantially impacted areas that that benefit from public private collaborations as it as it relates to to um, genomic sequencing and and I think you know I'd be really curious, Alana. You know, food security seems to be this this huge nebulous issue. You know that. The FAO says, you know, 600 to 800 million people are food insecure on a on a regular basis, it, and it seems very daunting. So, how can you help me understand how do individual farmers um, make contributions that that will benefit better food security in other parts of the world? Well, I mean. That's a, a great point. How do, how do I, as an individual farmer, actually think I can make a difference, right? And, uh, and sometimes I guess it is hard to think of yourself as an individual farmer, you know, here with our small operation in Western Canada having an impact. And yet, I, I, think, I think we do have an impact. I think we do make a difference. It's, it's in a couple of ways. I think, you know, first of all, our willingness to um, look at new technologies, new varieties, uh, that increase our productivity, that, you know, do allow us to, in fact, improve our sustainable practices, um, you know, that willingness to invest, uh, you know, invest in new equipment, invest in new technology, invest in, in better varieties. Um, you know, individually, we have to make those decisions every year in our farm and be willing to take the risk, uh, recognizing there's a huge benefit to that risk, the risk of investment to, um, you know, improve our operation, to actually adopt that new technology, that you know produces food in a in a better way, uh, more nutrition, uh, you know, more yield, etc. So number one, that's how I make a difference to food security as a as a as a producer is that you know being willing to invest and uh, take a chance on on new innovation and it's it's proven to be you know great decisions for us to be able to do that. I think the other way we as individual farmers make a difference is just purely in the productive capacity that we've got on our operations here. You know, the, the yellow peas that we're producing here on our farm make a difference to the people of um, Asia who are purchasing them. You know, increasing their nutritional 
um, you know, sort of profile of the foods that they're consuming, uh, making a big difference to them. You know, I think about the canola that we're producing here, and we know that the, the canola we produce here is getting crushed at crushed plants here in Saskatchewan, and that oil uh, is being used uh, in parts of the world, down in Mexico, for example, you know, really healthy oil that is being used in their, their food products and in their, in their cooking. Um, or the canola seed that's being exported into Asia and being crushed there and being used for their, their healthy food, um, you know, or, or some of the, the flax products that we know we're growing here that is being used in, um, in, in feeds around the world or as actual flax that is being used for, um, you know, food products. So I, I just think about the actual productive capacity that we have here on the farm, you know, in aggregate with all the other farmers of Canada, you know, we're, we're some of the world's largest exporters. So that also helps food security. And then I, think, you know, I, yeah. I guess individually as a, as a farmer, you know, I happen to be just involved in, in some of the international networks. And so as an individual farmer, I guess I'm trying to make a difference internationally as well and being a voice of reason, uh, pushing for, you know, good science-based regulation and policy. And not every farmer is going to make a difference in that way but they might make a difference by getting involved in, you know, other ways, whether it's the Canadian Food Grains Bank or, uh, you know, being active in, in their networks. So I think individually we can always make a difference. Sometimes it's, it's hard to imagine, but I think we really can make an impact. I think that's a great point, Alana, that, yeah, individually you might not, you, you might struggle a bit to figure out, well, how am I making a difference? But when you look at it collectively across the prairies or across Canada, as you said earlier, we are the leading exporter in so many crops so that that helps illustrate that if farmers weren't adopting these technologies, whether it's chemicals or fertilizer or seed or, or equipment, then Canada wouldn't be a leading exporter and our ability to help influence or you know, move food insecurity in the right direction would be lessened. And so, I think it, it's it's a fundamental importance that when farmers have the opportunity to adopt technologies, that the opportunity is the key thing. They may decide it doesn't work for me in my circumstances, but at least they had the opportunity to to try it out on their farm and make the decision for themselves. Yeah, that's right. You know, I think about one other thing that that uh, you know, as farmers having those choices, making the right decisions. You know, even even here on our operation, my husband and I pay a levy into our producer commission. So we're investing in ourselves to allow those technologies to continue to be available to us. So our levy, you know, goes into some of those commissions here we have in Saskatchewan and that, that, you know, structure sort of exists certainly across most of Western Canada. And, and I think a big part of Canada where farmers are reinvesting back in their own sector. I think that's also a way that we make a difference and really can impact uh, food security as well. Yeah. Yeah. I completely agree. Good job.